Where the light ends, life begins. A kind of life unlike anything on Earth. Down here, there is no sun, no color, only cold darkness, and creatures that have learned to feed on the light itself. Today, we'll descend into the very heart of the abyss to witness what no one has ever seen and to uncover why they feed on the light. We must travel to the deepest place on Earth, the Mariana Trench. Here, the ocean turns into an abyss, plunging 11,000 meters down. Our descent begins. Here, in the twilight zone of the ocean, lives a creature that has learned to deceive the darkness itself. This is the hatchetfish, a tiny predator barely 1.2 centimeters long. Beneath its belly lie hundreds of microscopic photophores, organs that emit a soft, bluish light. This light is not a weapon, it's protection. By glowing from below, the hatchetfish mimics the light filtering down from the surface, becoming invisible to hunters that watch from the depths. During the day, it hides in the shadows. At night, it rises closer to the surface, following the fading glow of the ocean's last light. In a world where the sun never shines, it survives by feeding on the light itself, and everything drawn to it. Deeper, where the light has almost faded, another creature appears. Tiny, yet dazzlingly beautiful. This is the firefly squid, a glowing marvel of the deep. It grows only eight centimeters long, yet it illuminates the darkness brighter than any star. Its entire body is covered in photophores, thousands of miniature light organs capable of flashing independently. When the squid moves, its body seems to dance in the dark, lights flickering and fading, creating the illusion of living fire. This light is both a signal and a shield. It blinds predators, confuses attackers, and helps others of its kind find each other in the endless black. By day, the firefly squid hides in the depths. At night, it rises toward the surface, to where light still survives. It does not just live in the dark, it brings its own light into it. We descend even deeper. Beyond a thousand meters, even the ghost of light disappears. Here begins the Midnight Zone, a place where eternal night rules the sea. Where light is a rare gift, there lives a creature that has learned to use that gift as a weapon. This is the anglerfish. It drifts slowly through the black water, like a fragment of a living nightmare. Its body can reach over 1.3 meters, and its massive jaws are lined with teeth curved inward, so no prey can ever escape. On its head grows a glowing lure, a living beacon known as the False Star. Its light is soft, almost warm, like a promise that was never real. That faint glow draws its victims closer until the darkness opens its jaws. The anglerfish does not seek the light. It creates it, not to live, but to kill. In this world where the sun has died, light has become a trap, and darkness itself, a home for those who have learned to rule it. We descend even deeper, to the place where even the anglerfish loses its light. We descend deeper still, into the very heart of the midnight zone. Here lives one of the most terrifying creatures of the deep, the black dragonfish. Its body is long and slender, like a shadow brought to life in the darkness. It grows only about 30 centimeters long, yet that's enough to make it a predator feared even by other predators. Along its body run rows of tiny glowing organs, bioluminescent lights it uses to deceive, to hunt, and to disappear. But the strangest thing of all is its mouth. Transparent fangs, like shards of glass, let light pass through them, hiding the hunter from its own reflection. Its eyes can sense even infrared light, the kind invisible to all other creatures. The dragonfish hunts in absolute darkness, turning the night itself into its weapon. Down here, nothing moves by chance. Every flicker of light is a deception. Every flash means death. The darkness grows thicker. Here lives a creature born of teeth and shadow. This is the viperfish. Its body seems small, only 30 to 35 centimeters long. Yet it's enough to strike fear even into larger predators. Thin, flexible, Almost transparent, it's built to glide through the water without a single sound. But its true terror lies in its jaws. Two enormous fangs, nearly a third of its entire body length, pierce through prey like harpoons. 
When the mouth closes, those fangs slide into special grooves in the skull so they don't pierce its own head. The viperfish hunts with light. A tiny bioluminescent organ on its head flickers like a distant beacon, a small signal in an endless sea of darkness. It lures in anything brave enough to approach. And when the victim comes close, the viperfish strikes in a flash of motion. It can wait for hours, motionless, like a shadow. In a world without the sun, creatures like this are the true devourers of light. We descend even deeper. Here, the pressure is strong enough to crush steel. Before us, the giant squid, one of the most mysterious creatures in the ocean. It can grow up to 30 meters long, and its eyes, the largest in the entire animal kingdom, capture even the faintest glimmers in the darkness. Reflections, flashes, movements, anything that reveals the presence of life. To this creature, light is not warmth. It is a signal, a warning, a chance to strike or to survive. In a world ruled by darkness, it hunts in absolute blackness. Two long tentacles, ringed with suckers lined with teeth, shoot forward like spears. In a single instant, the prey is caught. Its beak, hard as obsidian, tears through flesh as if it were paper. This is not a monster of legend. It is something real. The darker the ocean becomes, the brighter emerge those who have learned to live without light. The fangtooth is one of them. It has almost no eyes. The darkness has made vision useless. But it can still sense light, not with its eyes, but with its skin. At first glance, it's only 18 centimeters long. But behind that small body hides a mouth powerful enough to pierce even its own skull. Its teeth are the largest, in proportion to body size, of any creature on Earth. When its jaws close, every faint glimmer, every distant ray of light becomes a signal to attack. It doesn't swim toward the light. It waits for the light to come to it. And when another fish's bioluminescence flickers in the dark, the fangtooth is already there. We descend even deeper. The light has long been left behind. At the bottom of the ocean, where pressure can crush steel, lives the Hadal snailfish, the deepest creature on Earth. Only 28 centimeters long, soft and translucent, without eyes or protection, for there is nothing here to see. It feeds on the remains of those that once lived closer to the sun. Light never reaches this place, yet every particle that drifts down from above is light turned to dust. Even here, where darkness reigns, life still depends on it. The closer we get to the bottom, the less life resembles what we call life. Here, in eternal darkness, more than 10,000 meters deep, live the amphipods, tiny creatures only two to three centimeters long. Their bodies are translucent, as if made of glass. They have never known light, yet they carry its trace in their chemistry, in their energy, in every particle they consume. Even here, where there are no eyes, no sound, and no color, life still feeds on light. We've descended to the very bottom, to the place where light dies. And yet, life still finds a way to exist. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Leave a comment and subscribe. It's the only thing that can help me.